What is going on Guardians, Dorvirch here, and in this video I will be doing a solo flawless run of the Pit of Heresy dungeon as Arkstrider Hunter. This is the third video in a series where I go through every dungeon solo flawless as exclusively Arkstrider as a follow up to my build video which I will link in the description below. These runs will be with full walkthrough commentary, so if any of you are looking for a very consistent and reliable strategy that you can use to solo flawless all of these dungeons, that is exactly what you're going to find here. As usual, I have made a couple of modifications to the build to adapt it to the specific run that I'm doing. If you have seen the previous runs in this series, the first thing you'll probably notice that's different is that I am not using the Lament Sword this time. This is for a few different reasons, but the most notable one is the final boss fight. That boss hits so hard at melee range that, even with the Lament's healing coupled with 100 resilience and damage resist mods, there's still an extremely high risk of dying if you sword that boss without either a well or a bubble to keep you alive. The other noticeable reason is that in the jumping maze encounter before the final boss, Galahorn provides a very convenient way to clear out both the yellow bar wizards and the adds around them without having to jump towards them while getting shot at and risk either getting shot to death or falling off the map. And to better facilitate the inclusion of Galahorn in this build, I have dropped Striking Light in favor of High Energy Fire, and dropped Powerful Friends in favor of another Rocket Ammo Finder to ensure that I never run out of Rocket Ammo. Other than that, the only modifications are the Longer Grenades and Jolting Grenades Arc Fragments to make the Pulse Grenades more potent as usual. So for this first part of the dungeon, we will want to start by going right over here and dropping down to the A symbol. By the way, I'm not actually aware if these hive symbols have official conventional callouts. I just use the names that myself and my friends came up with on our first blind run of this dungeon about a year ago. So once we've killed the pit keeper, we can come in, kill the knight, take his sword, and see what symbols we're working with. So a little one-two punch action should take care of him. I missed. There we go. So we're looking at EVGA, divided by, and asterisk. So if I remember correctly, asterisk should be out here, down, and to the left. Yep, there it is. So let's drop down to the top here. Now we're going to drop the sword here, but when you're soloing this dungeon, it's important to remember that if you leave the sword on the ground for too long, it's going to despawn. And you'll have to find a new knight and pick up a new one. So just make sure you don't leave it laying around too long. If you have to kill a bunch of enemies, pick it up periodically. We're going to Galahorn these guys, hopefully before the real boss starts shooting at us. That splash should get the other one. Yep, there it goes. Now we'll pick this up, and we'll very carefully range attack this boss to death, using this sort of pillar in front of us as cover. I have found that it is much easier to stay mobile while shooting this boss with the sword if you only shoot it while airborne. You won't do as much DPS with it as if you just keep yourself grounded, but of course as a flawless run, you'll take the safe option every time. And if you do happen to get the Sword Super, the Sword Super does actually work against these guys, but I really don't like running straight at the wizard. They really hurt. And I'd rather just finish the job from range like this. Alright, there we go. Wizard is dead. So that leaves us with EVGA and Divided By. These are going to be up and to our right. But before anything, we're going to have to get a new sword, because 15 ammo is not enough to kill any of the bosses. So we're going to come back to A, since it's just right here, go in, and kill a fresh knight. As for things that actually threaten you in this encounter, there are not very many, but it's extremely important to not mess around with the few things that do threaten you. That being the yellow bar ogres that you find outside on the bridges a lot of the time, and the two ogres in the Shrieker boss room, as well as the wizards in the wizard boss room. Since there aren't actually that many threats out here, to play it safe, just rocket anything remotely threatening. So if you see an ogre, rocket it right away. If that thing trains its eye blast on you for more than a second or two, you're done. So don't take any chances. 
Of course, the game decided to troll us by spawning another sword bearer right where we were already going. So there are two swords on the ground, but one of them is going to time out, so we can't actually use both, but both of the remaining bosses each take very little sword ammo to kill, so one sword should take us the rest of the way through the encounter. Where the sword guy will just run at him and then use a jolting pulse to take out the adds. It's going to be pretty fun to watch. So the easy way to take this guy out without taking any damage is to alternate two hits, block his attack. Two hits, block his attack. Took me a little bit to settle into the rhythm here because the thralls needed to be killed, but now, as you can see, oh, there's an ogre. So if an ogre starts firing into the room, we can just lure him to the side, he's gonna follow us right over and we can keep killing him in peace. And you remember what we do to ogres, right? We rocket them. 52 sword ammo is plenty to take out the shrieker. So we can just take this sword with us to Divided By and finish the encounter. Oh, well, Divided By is down there. I did not need to take that elevator. Sword Knights we can just run past. Since they don't have a ranged attack, they're not going to do anything to us. There's an ogre below us. So see ogre, rocket it. Pick up the sword to refresh, and then get to clearing out these adds, including the pit keeper to open the door. Alright, door is open. Now with the Shrieker, if we're quick enough, we can actually take it out before the ogres get their eye blasts firing at us. But if we're too slow like that, it's still okay, we'll just use our recoil compensation skills to take it out the rest of the way while taking no damage and we don't even have to kill that stuff. And of course it would not be one of my solo flawless runs without an embarrassingly bad grenade throw. Now we'll just go to the exit where that beam of light is, and we still have plenty of rockets left so we can just use those to clear here. There is sometimes an ogre along this path, but it looks like we got lucky. And Pitkeeper dead, we are clear to proceed. For the next encounter, which is the Ogre Maze, if you really want to, you can actually swap to a Void subclass for just that encounter, so you can keep making yourself invisible while running the ball around the maze. But in my experience, you don't actually need to be invisible as long as you just keep moving. The Ogres are pretty slow traversing the tunnels, so one might break your shield as you run past it, but before it can really do anything else to you, you'll be way ahead of it. And by the time it catches up to you, you'll already be in one of the safe areas moving to the next dunk. So the layout of this maze is somewhat complicated, but I actually have a very simple formula that allows even someone as directionally challenged as myself to get a very quick, very easy clear here. So I'm going to show you that path here. So I'll drop down here. Go towards your left and immediately come into this door. And then we're going to run forward until we find the adds and the guy who holds the void charge. These yellow bars will go down to three punches so we can get invisible, close the gap on the knight, and punch it to death. It did not make us invisible. Okay, I'm going to drop this and get a real punch. There we go. Grab the Void Charge and go back out the same way we came. Now this is going to be the only long run that we have to any of the dunk spots using this method, but there's only going to be one Ogre in our way, and provided that we quickly slide past him, he's going to attempt his slam attack, but he's not going to be close enough by the time it lands to actually kill. And it looks like this guy has actual potato reflexes and didn't even attempt the slam. We keep sliding over here because under the arc speed booster effect, sliding is actually faster than sprinting. Dunk, and then we're going to take the first entrance on the right. So same deal, punch this orange bar three times to start the chain. Some red bar thralls are spawning, so might as well punch them too. And then take out the knight. Grab the void charge, we don't need to kill any of this other stuff. 
will come right out the other side here and the dunk will be immediately on our right. Now we're going to turn around and take the first entrance on the right again. This is why I love this route. All of the distances you have to traverse are so short except the very first one. Get some punching action going. Take out the knight. And exit the other side of the room right here. There's a chance that we'll see an ogre right out here. But yep, there he is. But we can very quickly get around this corner. And if we keep sliding, it really messes with his targeting. Something I've noticed about the enemies in this game in general is that sliding seems to completely break their aiming AI. I guess it's a combination of the changing speeds and the changing head heights. They just don't know where to aim to lead you properly. I'm gonna flag here out of principle even though I don't need it. And begin the Chamber of Suffering encounter. For most builds, this encounter is where the bulk of the difficulty in this dungeon lies. Every time you dunk a ball, it spawns another Boomer Knight on top of the already very high ad density, so it can get really oppressive. But since we are invisible all the time, and have very high burst damage to take out these knights with the void charges, it's basically free. The only way that this build fails this encounter is by being really slow, going and killing the knight, grabbing the void charge, and running back. But even with the far knight spawn, as long as we don't waste time on the way there, we have plenty of time to run there, one to punch the knight, pick up the void charge, and run back before the totem actually wipes the encounter. It will generally be starting to turn red and angry by the time you get back, but you still have several seconds between when it starts to turn red and when it actually does the wipe mechanic. Here it is starting to get angry, and here we are to appease it. When you get back to the totem, do make sure you stand on it for at least a few seconds. If you just run straight through, a lot of the time it won't calm the totem down enough and it will cause a wipe. Here comes the third knight. The knights are always going to spawn on the left side first, then the middle, then the right. So you can just be aware of that pattern and then Keep doing your invisibility rotation on the totem until you see the next knight start to come out of the hallway, then start moving. We are starting to build up quite a few boom knights on the top level, which is why we are dropping the ball to refresh invis before doing the actual dunk, so we don't get killed while dunking. I whiffed 1-2 punch, but it doesn't matter. Okay, I just missed picking up the void charge. If that happens, don't go back to pick it up, run back to the totem, calm it down first, then go back for the void charge. If you waste time doubling back, running back and forth, that runs a very high risk of wiping to the totem mechanic. That's a cursed thrall, so I'm going to throw a grenade there, pick it up, and dunk it. I would rather have gone invisible before dunking that, but the cursed thrall made things a little bit complicated. Again, just chill on the plate, keep going invisible until you see the knight spawn. Run over, burst down the knight, take the void charge, run back to the totem. Now that's five out of six dunks that we have to do. Just one more and then all the adds will despawn. Including the knights up top, we're not even going to have to worry about killing them. So it looks like the final knight has arrived. So we're just gonna come over here. Give him the good old one-two punch. And dunk the final void charge. The suffering has ended, so everything should be despawning right around now. So this drop immediately coming up was for me by far the most nerve-wracking part of learning to do this solo flawless. But fortunately, it's not actually difficult, and if you know what to do, you can make it through really reliably. Just as with everything like this, take your time. So what we'll want to do is simply drop down one level at a time. There's a lot of sort of mini platforms, so as soon as it's wide open, drop down one level. Land on the edge. 
and there's absolutely no obstacle between those two levels, so we can just drop down here. Go to the side so the pendulum is guaranteed to not hit us, drop down one level. Here's another free one. And for the final one, again, just wait until it's open, then drop down. The only reason to drop down all the way at once is if you're going for Giga Chad points, and solo flawless runs are not the time for Giga Chad points. So I do have a map open on my other monitor of this maze, but I'm probably still going to get lost because I'm just that stupid with directions. So it looks like we have Asterisk, Gymnast, and Snow Cone. So Snow Cone... Snow Cone and Asterisk both look like they're accessible by going to the left, so let's go that way first. So I'm going to have to jump here and go across and then through to a, what looks like it'll be a twisting passage. A passage that bends to the left. All right, and then to the left, I'll need to jump across this thing, and then Snow Cone should be somewhere ahead of us. Yep, I do see a bunch of red on the radar. Let's take these guys out to give us room to interpret this map. Alright, that does not look like it. I think I need to go further over this way. Yep, there it is. There it is. So one Galahorn shot will take care of the wizard, and then everything else will despawn. There's the sound, that means one out of three symbols are done. Now for Asterisk, I think I need to backtrack a little bit. Unless there's... the map makes it look like there's a way to get through here, but I don't think there really is. Another way that you can approach this encounter, if you don't want to use a map, is by just randomly running around and playing warm or colder with the red marks on the radar. There is a random shrieker just floating in the air somewhere as well as a few adds that spawn without actually being part of a wizard's entourage. But for the most part, if you see red on your radar, it means there is a wizard in that direction. Looks like we are going to have to go through here. The easy way is to go to the middle one, wait until it starts to go up, then slide through. And there should be a path out to the right. I think this is it. Yeah, I should be able to make that jump. And then it looks like this structure in the center is sort of a central hub. So asterisk should be... to the left. Straight to the left, and then to the right around a corner. I see red on the radar. That's probably a good sign. I definitely messed up my orientation on the map going through there, so now I'm just using the radar method. The red is over this way. Okay, it's just a couple acolytes. Looks like that wasn't real. Oh, I hear a wizard. There it is. Now the last one should be back to that sort of central hub area and then directly opposite the direction I just went. I believe that should be this way. I'm 
just like with the duality dungeon, my general advice for this section is to take your time. Every single obstacle in this maze follows a repeating, predictable pattern that never ever changes. So if you die from jumping into one of those obstacles, it's probably because you rushed. But I do see the red on the radar. Yeah, you know what? I'm terrible with this map. I'm just going to do this the radar way. It looks like we're getting pretty close. There should be a wizard. Yep, there it is in the back. I missed, so that didn't quite kill. There we go. That'll kill. And conveniently, the exit is right here. And onwards to the final boss. For the final boss encounter, the only real potential complication, for this build at least, is in the cursed thralls that spawn during DPS. But that is one of the reasons why we're using Gallarhorn, because the wolf pack rounds will deal with those on their own before they even get to us. We will lose our stacks of high energy fire when the cursed thralls die to the wolf packs, but they come so late in DPS that high energy fire will still pull a lot of weight. The other reason that rockets in general are good for this boss is because they allow you to very easily keep your situational awareness while doing DPS. It's very helpful here to swap onto a chest piece with rocket reserves before rallying. If you've raided a bunch, you're probably very familiar with this. And I'm also going to put concussive dampener on because most of the damage that's actually threatening in here is the boss's slams and fire while you're doing DPS. So solar plus concussive should make us pretty safe. And let's move forward and start this. So before anything else, we're going to want three stacks of combination blow. That's two, and then a thrall will definitely give us the third. And meanwhile, the sword bearers should be following us and grouping up, so they'll all die to a lightning aftershock. It's always satisfying. So even though we don't really take damage while we're guarding in front of the Shrieker, we're clearing out the adds just so that we don't have to deal with the annoying upwards pull of the recoiler from getting hit. So we'll just stand over here and deflect. We can kill those acolytes after. It'll also be good for our combination blow timer. Drop a sword, dodge, refresh. And we're going to be visible by the time we dunk. But as long as we're quick about it, we're not going to take enough damage to matter. Grab another sword. And we'll go and deal with the knight. Again, take out the adds first. Now you'll want to watch your positioning doing this, because even though you're very safe from the knight when you do two hits into a block and repeat, the boss can hurt a little bit. So we'll want to lure the knight to the edge of the room here, where we don't have line of sight to the boss, and then we can just safely chip him down until he's dead. One, two, block. One, two, block. He does tend to get pushed around a little bit, so if he gets pushed too far, just lure him back. But it looks like we're fine here. No combination blow stacks, but thralls spawn so frequently in here that I'm not worried. We just have the wizard left. So we'll stack up to three. Or two, since they all seem to have died, and then punch the sword bearer. And as always, we'll want to bring the sword up there and then clear the adds before doing anything else. Now for this wizard, you can actually, if you position yourself correctly, sort of head glitch it to death on the stairs. We'll run over here, and since it's on the other side of the room, we can just chill halfway down these stairs. 
and it's basically not going to hit us unless it comes very far forward. But since it thinks it can hit us from there, it's going to not move. Right, that's all three. So now we're going to take the Void Charge, and we're going to drop it before we dunk, because we do want to dunk from the safety of Invis, especially when the boss is right there. We're about to have to commit to a DPS phase. That's quite a bit of invisibility, because he was a yellow bar. So now we dunk. Grenade. Super. DPS. Right, there's the first spawn of ads. Remember, it's important to keep your situational awareness while DPSing this boss. And rockets make that easy, because you only have to fire twice every several seconds, and you're not stuck in a scope the whole time either. As you can see, the wolf packs deal with the cursed barrels beautifully, and we're out of rocket ammo, so switch to the fusion with the boss spec, jumping over the cursed thralls to bait them into exploding. Once he plunges his sword into the ground, we can get a few more fusion shots off, and then get out of there before the wipe mechanic. Now we'll just do that one more time, and it should be an easy two phase, since he's already more than half dead. Right, this guy will make three stacks. I missed. It's alright, two stacks is still plenty to kill the sword bearers. So same as before, clear out all the adds first, then lure the sword guy to a safe place and start wailing on him. Come on. One, two, block, repeat. He's getting a little bit close to the center, so I'm going to let him come this way. There's the sword super, so one chop, and he's done. He dropped heavy, so I'm going to actually stand on the brick and swap my reserves chest piece on and off. That move is very powerful in raids, by the way, if you manage to find a safe spot with a heavy brick in it. Get some extra damage for the next DPS phase. So since the boss is pretty close to that one dunk spot, we would rather be invisible when we dunk right next to him. And stealth dunk. Now up here we're going to have the Shrieker. Just kill the adds so we don't have to deal with as much recoil. And swing the sword to become visible. And that's two out of three. I do see movement over here, so I'm going to refresh Combination Blow before I leave. We don't need to Invis Dunk this one, because the boss is across. This is the last sword we're going to need for the dungeon. Clear out the adds first. If there's still a couple more. It looks like we are good to... Nope. Not quite yet. Don't take any chances with the wizard. Things can go bad really fast if some adds catch you by surprise while you're doing this. But if it's just the wizard, as you can see the head glitch makes it free. There it is, there's the last one. So, again, as we come down, we'll want to pay attention to where the boss is. And it looks like we do not actually have to Invisible Dunk. But since there are Thralls here, I'll stack up Combination Blow, 
to give us a panic button in case something goes really bad during DPS. So now we dunk. And destroy. If not for that crystal in the middle, this DPS phase would be so much harder. Being stuck in an arena without cover. Here come the Cursed Thralls, jump over them to bait them, and he is done. That was a solo flawless run of the Pit of Heresy dungeon as Arkstrider Hunter. You can find a full video breakdown of the build in the description below, as well as a dim link to the exact configuration that I used for this run. Drop a like if you found this video helpful or entertaining, and if you want to see more Destiny 2 content including endgame build videos, consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one, Guardians.